Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Sisters and brothers in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we begin this solemn celebration in union with Christians throughout the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem in triumph to complete his work as our Saviour, to be rejected, to suffer and die, and to be raised from the dead. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. And so welcome to this Palm Sunday worship from Withenshaw and Hill Green Methodists. It's good to see you and to share with you today. And just in case you haven't noticed, uh, today you should have changed your clocks and sprung forward if you're in the UK. So you've lost an hour if you forgot. We worship and in this service we're going to be focusing on that entry into Jerusalem. In our live worship at half past ten, which is summertime, we will be uh, looking more at the whole passion narrative. So we invite you to join us for that. Let's pray. Holy God, as we join with your people throughout the world to mark today, to celebrate with those crowds as you enter Jerusalem, so may your Holy Spirit inspire and encourage us as we reach out to celebrate with the whole world the new life and the freedom that you bring. Amen. Your presence, all our fears are 
washed away, washed away. Mark 11, 1 to 11. When they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany and Mount of Olives, he sent out two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you. As soon as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it and immediately he will send it here. They went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered just as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. Many spread their garments on the street, and others cut down branches off the trees and scattered them on the street. Those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David, that is coming in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. When he had looked around at everything, as the hour was now late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Palm Sunday. And in some traditions called uh, Passion Sunday, as they read through the entirety of uh, the scriptures to 
understand the story leading up um, to the resurrection of Jesus. Because if you skip to the next pre-recorded service, we will have the triumphant entry today. And then next Sunday, we will we will be all about Jesus being resurrected. And we'll have missed the really important bit, or one of the really important bits, because the resurrection is important too, of course. But we'll have missed all about the death and um, the what, what Jesus went through. Now, I do know, and it's probably a bit already come up, but it will be... Uh, gone through. We are having extra live services in order for us to think through some of those um, stories and the, what Jesus went through more more clearly. But equally, uh, if you tune in to the live service at uh, 10.30 on Sunday or watch it after it's uh, passed, it's still available on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, we're actually taking the time to really in, in different ways, through different mediums, plot that story of Jesus. I find this Sunday, the Palm Sunday service, actually pretty difficult. I remember it was one of the first uh, services that I ever preached on, and it was at Brownlee Green, and I didn't do any of the worship. I just was meant to offer a reflection upon um, this, this story. And maybe... It, it's because it's just so full of irony, isn't it? We know what's about to happen and yet we hear this story and the way that people are treating Jesus and, and I don't know, it's, it's difficult to really understand what their motives is. Ah, oh. I mean, Mark insists upon using this kingship title, that Jesus is a king, um, and yet completely subverts every expectation of what a king would do. We don't need to look uh, far in the narratives of the Old Testament to see what kings did and see what judges did. They were military conquerors. They won great battles. That's what kings were about fighting off your enemies, even the judges. When you use the title kingship, those are the sort of things that are instantly coming into mind. And so too, the laying of uh, palm branches and coats, they're both to do with kingship. Um, Maccabees, um, in the first book of Maccabees, that's where the palm branches are, are laid on for, um, is it uh, Simon? Um who we, we, they're celebrating? They're celebrating his victory to 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 reclaim um, Jerusalem, and so all these people they've taken to the streets because they're totally convinced uh, that Jesus is king and king in the way that they understand. But Jesus doesn't ever do king in the way that they expect. And there is some small amount of tragedy in that. I mean, ultimately, it's wonderful and full of hope. But can you imagine those people who are celebrating Jesus in the moment? Because it's so easy to vilify them, isn't it? It's so easy to say, oh, yeah, one minute they're praising him and the next they're shouting crucify him. Wow. How weird. How flip floppy. Can you imagine people living under the thumb of a, a cruel uh, regime? And they believe, fervently believe that God is going to rescue them. God is going to set them free. And they see in this man, a glimmer of hope. He's going to be the one. So much so that they're celebrating his triumph as he comes in. They don't need to wait. It's already, he's going to do it. And their expectations, what do you think they're thinking in that moment as they're shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What do you think they're thinking? And hoping 
and daring to believe, only to be disappointed so quickly after. Now we know, we know, we know that God had a different plan. We know that Christ had victory. But I really think that for today, if we just place ourselves in the shoes of one of those welcoming Jesus into that city, perhaps we know ourselves and have had our own instances where we have felt that God was going to act in a certain way in our lives. Something was going to happen for sure. You know, it's all, you've got all, everything laid out perfectly and you know how it's going to go and then something happens and it's not what you expected. We know um, as believers that there are those difficult times. Jesus subverts what kingship means and God continues to this day to subvert what we expect. The way the church looks, the people that are welcomed, who God will use and who um, is going to be important and what's going to be significant, all those things at change and it can take us by surprise but God works in mysterious ways God challenges the expectations of today and of society and it's meaningless before God she will do whatever she likes God will change our expectations. Are we ready to be challenged and changed by God, for God to reveal new things for us today and for the future? I hope that we're ready. Let us take some time now to pray for others. Almighty God, we ask you to hear our prayers today for the church, the world, the local community and people in particular need. We pray for the Christian church throughout the world. Almighty God, during this Holy Week, we ask you to encourage all Christians to draw close to you for their strength and comfort. We particularly remember those Christians who suffer persecution as a result of their faith. Almighty God, we pray for our community, our churches within Withenshaw and Heal Green, and we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on the congregations of those five churches so that we can show your love for each other and the local community. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Creator God, we pray for our world. We pray for the nations of the world embroiled in long-term conflicts and for the communities scarred by political unrest and upheaval. Grant wisdom to the world's decision makers. Guide them to work for peace and the well-being of all people. We particularly pray for all the countries battling against the COVID pandemic and ask for a spirit of cooperation to find a way to protect all people. Father God, we thank you for all those who help our community to run smoothly because of their jobs, volunteer work or neighbourliness. Help us to be supportive and encouraging and to step into situations where we can serve, 
Bless our neighbours and strengthen those who are working in your name in order to bring healing and comfort to those in need. Merciful Father, we know that there are many people who are struggling due to illness, lack of employment, final financial problems, loneliness or the loss of loved ones, either recently or at this time of year. In a moment's silence, please pray for those people who we hold up to you today, who were in particular need of God's help today. Almighty God, we ask you to draw close to all of those mentioned and have th that have been brought up to you today so that they may be aware of your healing presence and we ask you to provide your peace and comfort for them at this time. Mother God, we pray today for the anniversary of the COVID lockdowns, the anniversary of everything that has been going on through COVID this time. We pray for all of the people who have lost their lives during, due to COVID. And we also pray for their families and friends and people who have lost people to COVID. We will now take some silence to think about those affected. Glorious God, we thank you for bringing us together today, either in our churches or online at home. We thank you for being our inspiration and the focus of our praise. Send us out full of love, joy and hope. Let our enthusiasm be infectious to those who we meet and may others be drawn to you especially in this most holy of weeks. Merciful Father, accept these praise, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Joy in your face. 
voice, let my whole being praise you, praise you. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to move in the power of your spirit. Teach me to walk in the light of your presence. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to love with the heart of compassion. Teach me to trust in the word of your promise. Teach me to hope in the day of your coming. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. Teach me to dance to the beat of your heart. And so now some quick notices. Remember, you should have changed your clocks if you're in the UK, gone forward an hour, which means that you can watch our live worship at half past 10 Sunday morning as we go through the Passion Narrative for Palm Sunday. Noon, we have our Zoom fellowship. Get in touch to have the details of how to connect to that. Monday through Friday of Holy Week, we're going to have live worship on Facebook and Zoom at half past seven in the evening for about half an hour. Easter Day, we will have the pre-recorded worship and we will have live worship in buildings at Lawton Moor, 10 a.m., Field Green, 10.30 a.m. and Brownley Green at noon. In the afternoon, between three and four, you can come to the car park at St Andrews if you would like to receive Holy Communion. So we look forward to seeing you at uh, some of those services coming up online and in person today. Let's close now with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.